and welcome to the first episode of the Simpsons Bongo Walkthrough. Is that what it's called? It is now. Um, I'm going to look through every single episode of the Bongo Simpsons comics. Starting with Simpsons Comics number one, USA, two dollars twenty-five. Do you think um you think that this is actually the first ever Simpsons comic? I think it must be, as it is labeled that way. Yeah, I don't think anything came because it's pretty early. When is it? Do we know? Um by note. I like... I put it about ninety seven, I'd say, because I remember like I started getting these comics as a kid and I started getting them from roughly like issue ten. Yeah. So I don't But you you were within half a decade, so not bad. It's October the thirty first, nineteen ninety three. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that's only basically at that point. What was it, 1990? The first season came out, yeah, or was it 89? I think the Christmas one was 89, so the actual first series will have been 90. But they usually start in the fall, right? So, I think we're looking at maybe season two had been out by this point, 90, 90, 91, 92. Maybe season three had been out, I think. Yes, I feel like, yeah. Roughly three or four, maybe. Well, if it's 1993 October, I think the most that they could have had out is three seasons. One in 90, one in 91, 92. I guess they, they would have only just started the season for 93. Anyway, we can do our, we can we can talk about that later, can't we? What about that cover, though, Zaz? Tell me about it. It's a good start. It's got the whole family. Um, giant Homer holding Marge in a King Kong-esque way. Um, Bart bouncing off the head cheekily. Lisa, Maggie's tied up with a ball of yarn. Um, Lisa is looking shocked and it looks like there's something else that looks like Lisa at the very bottom. Yeah. And then Burns, Barney and Mo looking very bongo. But you know it's a parody of Fantastic Four number one. Did you know that? I did not, but I assumed it was a parody of something so I it, thought. Yeah, it's pretty much be. exactly the same as uh, as number one um, with um, Marge being the invisible girl as she was known at. Um, I can't turn invisible fast enough she was saying while being grabbed but um lisa is is doing what the thing did but he was smashing a car and she's simply touching it the string weirdly enough it's in the original comic mr fantastic reed richards is tied up with some string and it said it'll take more than ropes to keep mr fantastic out of action but this is an alien emerging from the ground so i'm not really sure why reed richards is tied up in ropes but anyway, it's a homage to a classic uh, Jack Kirby Fantastic Four cover. Um, Burns is obviously something to uh, do with it as he is holding some kind of chemical. So that's yes. setting up the story. It is setting and up. It said he's here and he's hungry, the amazing colossal Homer. Yeah, absolutely. So if we click in, we get an, a, an opening page from Matt Groening talking about uh, how this is the sure to be collector's item of simpsons comic number one do you know how much it's currently worth a pound 50 it is apparently according to the internet uh four you can get it for 40 bucks nice uh, i have it free 40 dollars ain't, ain't that much really to be honest no um, not worth holding on to for 30 years not at all no um, anyway, so um, Graining goes on to tell that you need to buy it because this is not a library, you know, knowing full well that most of us are reading it in WH Smith's in the early 90s. What we're trying to do at Bongo Comics is take a lifelong love of comics and see if we can put our own stuff out. He, he, was, he did uh, that life in hell prior to The Simpsons, obviously, so he's got some deep love for comics. Yeah, you know I bet what? he's sick of doing these as well. He does one of these for every DVD. Oh, he did one of these for every DVD, like an introduction page. But he's completely run out of things to say. What, you really think he's writing them? I think he probably wrote them. I don't think it's a stretch to ask him to write like five paragraphs about his own TV show. If you're a fan the of the Simpsons TV show, I can't tell when you're talking because I can't see your face anymore. Go on, carry on. That is it. If you're a fan of the Simpsons TV show, we think you'll dig the comic, um, as well as Bartman, 
actually a radioactive man. So did they all come out at the same time? Yeah, I believe they are like subplot stories in the Simpsons comics. They do like a, we'll get onto it, but every second story in the Bongo early ones is like a fake comic of its own, like Buzzman. Okay. And what we try to do with the TV show is quite unusual. We sneak in little details for real fans. We call them Easter eggs these days change the couch gags and sneak in funny sides and we call freeze frame jokes so the secret jokes you only get by hunting and searching a videotaped simpsons episode with your remote control how quaint we call this <laughs> revolutionary concept in tv entertainment rewarding you for paying attention and now we're trying to do rewarding you for paying attention to our comic books seems like that is prime for an acronym R-Y-F-P-A. So please pay attention and let us know if you dig your rewards. Basically, they're saying that there's lots of little Easter eggs in here, which is, I'm looking forward to that. Yes, yeah, there'll be lots of things. I certainly am. J. Vernon Pentecost. And Very to much. kick things off, a full Pem and Skem family. They're all Pem and Skem, aren't they? Left and right. And then down at the bottom right of the bottom, it says, Simpsons Comics is published six times a year by Bongo Entertainment. Really, bi-monthly. Yeah, it became monthly at some point, but yeah, it must have started off every two months. Maybe The Simpsons wasn't popular enough for them. No, no. Simply and merely a cultural phenomenon. In the height of 1993. Um, did, is bongo a reference to something do you know of or is that isn't that the name of the character from life in hell yeah i think the rabbit i think the white rabbit is called bongo that's right pretty sure but i don't is. know why i don't know why he's called bongo i don't know what that's in itself is a reference to or why he's got that name i think it's probably a reference to captain beefheart yes it must be so we begin the first story as we know it's the amazing colossal homer a matt graining prediction and uh written uh, by Steve Vance with art by Bill Morrison. I wonder if we'll, they'll regret putting their names on this. But a nice opening scene, um, I'd say from the scales perspective, the weighing scales perspective, we see, well, boy, how big am I? Says Homer in a very, a, a very uh, brave opening gambit. <laughs> yes, it is a odd first panel. I like a, I, I do like a full page first panel though. Splash, and, um, as we call them in the biz. Yes, and they are kicking off with something technically interesting. Like this isn't an angle you get in the show a lot, and um, yeah, obviously with it, with it being static, you have more time to look at it as opposed to it moving into a second scene. Uh, it's good, indeed. There's also the if you look at his chest and belly and. M and a G. Ah, yeah, just like the ears. Very clever. Very clever indeed. So it turns out that Bart is weighing him. Wow, 263 pounds, a new record. And this is probably before he decided to get really fat in that episode. So um, Marge walks in and says, here's some nice fluffy towels. Bart, what are you doing? I'm reading the scales for Homer. He can't see past his belly. And uh, Marge has a go at him for snacking and eating all of the cookies. But um, uh, Homer says, I couldn't resist eating those little bow ties with the pink frosting on top. And um, Marge gets really annoyed because they're actually hourglasses um, for Selma's biological clock watchers anonymous meeting tonight. That's quite funny. And um, yes. Homer makes a... Go on, sorry, you might as well finish that panel. Homer makes a promise to only eat one donut that day. Yes. Um, yeah, I thought it was a rip-off of the episode, and then I've just realised now that it can't be because it came beforehand, which is interesting. It's a pretty um, bog-standard idea, though. Um, but this isn't him trying to gain weight. This is him just trying to find it. And I didn't realise in that second panel he's eating the hourglass cookie. Yes. Which is, again, there you go. There's an attention to detail that we were promised moments ago. And the bathroom, Simpsons bathroom, is way more designed than it is usually. That nice flowery uh, wallpaper, for sure. And a rug. Um, yeah, classic Simpsons, setting up a Marge Homer conflict, nice and easy. Good way to kick things off. Some fine pemming and scamming going on in, in uh, panel three, and... I'd say generally the drawing is fairly decent other than maybe this Homer, Homer's face, but uh, still not terrible. No, Only pretty, one... true to, pretty true to life for the show so far. We aren't straying away from the artistic style as of now. So we move on to now the bottom uh, series of images, which is a nice series of Homer uh, inside Homer. Only one donut, it's not fur. And uh, he says, I don't have to think about donuts all day. And then yeah, he predictably sees a cloud that reminds him of a donut, but not just one, three. And then eventually a whole box that says, eat us, Homer. Reminds yeah, me of the guy from uh, Kirby Enthusiasm, Jeff Garland, who was, I think it was him who was talking about. 
how his obsession with eating a full box of donuts saved him. Maybe I'm making this story up. He he would buy a full box of donuts and eat them. And one day he uh, was eating the box, but not in the shop, but in the car. And the shop exploded. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> That's <laughs> not true. There's no way that story is true. I think I just made it up. Just saying false. Why don't you take this page? Why don't we tag team the pages? Okay. Um, We've got in the first panel a very cool, it's Mr. Burns in his um, office, but with a very big Burns shadow being cast up against the ceiling which is really well done and then he is three panels of him presumably struggling with some, with something and then in the third one calling out to the name Smithers um, he's obviously really struggling to open something Smithers comes in you bellowed so uh, Burns wants him to open some paper clips yeah and they're, they're 14 karat gold paper clips because he's so rich and uh, it's actually one of those easy opening ones but the implication with the struggle at the beginning is a little bit that he's having a poop. It's very weird, isn't it? Like, it's, he's cold as well. It's um, very cold. <laughs> It's it's just odd. It's an odd choice. It's it's more um it's more than what you'd expect for panel two of a Simpsons comic. It's a um, nice page, just like a, a big image there with that shadow, as you say, and then this like run of of him straining and groaning to to curl one out, and it turns out that actually he's just trying to open his twenty four karat gold paper clips. Yeah, all very well done and true to, and you can see the liberties they're taking, like with the again the big shadow on Burns's um home is good indeed. And that's so that, not something it's not something you get in the show a lot. No, and I guess that it's, this would be a blink and you'd miss it, but the medium of comic book leads itself to those big splash and big pictures. Ah, Smithers, if only you possess if I possess your life, youthful like, athleticism. And uh, Smithers obviously passes it off like probably the package was uh, defective. And I'll I'll send off a scathing letter and, and sue them into bankruptcy. And uh, Burns uncustomarily waves it away that he doesn't he doesn't need to take down these uh, insignificant people, but rather he's he's ruminating on his own lack of strength and how he once bested Man Mountain Mackenzie at the game of quoits. All these years, his body's betrayed by time, and uh, we do get a, a nugget here that his personal uh, fortune valued at two and a half billion dollars. This is even before Jay Z became a billionaire. And uh, he says that, that wealth is no substitute for physical well-being. And I don't think I've ever heard him say that before. And he looks down and he looks at the ants down below. And uh, he says, you know, why should he suffer the same as these uh, these uh, insects below him? He's reminded then of Project Y. And we get a, a mischievous and very nice, that's a beautiful panel of, of mischievous and malevolent burns saying, yes, why don't we drop in on the boys in R&D? Lovely stuff. The middle panel of the page is my favourite with the hot cross burns. Very it's good. Got, like, the window um, reflection is looking pretty cool. Again, these are just things that they're, they're making a point of it being different to the show with things like that. I don't think a lot of this stuff sticks. I don't know. We'll find out on the journey, but I think it becomes more generic as we go along. And because this is issue one, they're putting in particular effort to make it look um, artistic stick maybe we'll see um, yeah you can sort of hear Mr Burns saying these lines which is quite cool it doesn't take much to um, for the imagination to kick in which so it's a good um, good idea really it's a good way to expand the whole thing about spin-off Springfield that we've talked about um, we're probably going to see lots of that within this world oh yeah it's uh, it's an interim between um, it's not quite hit and run it's not called hit and run is it what's it called tapped out tapped out it's not called simpsons tapped out but it is not quite the show either but uh, those two are great panels we should we should keep in mind our favorite panels of the episode maybe anyhow i do like that uh, face forward burns as well it's cool so then we, we move on and they do indeed go down in the elevator through some uh, little easter eggs again but nothing uh, you know of, of people buried in the ground and and uh, your classic toxic spill um project yet yeah, why he exposes my youth ray why just saying the name sends a sublime thrill coursing through my veins. And um, they talk, uh, you know, Smithers says that how this might help humanity. But of course, Burns says, is he, is he going to give it to Joe Sixpack? an extra 50 years to waste sitting to waste sitting on his keister reading comic books or oh, how very meta i did it for me 
so I can regain the vigor of my youth and the, dis the iron fist. Let's have a look at this panel. You've got office, wine cellar, escape, tunnel, submarine pen, lab, and way down at the bottom, rumpus room. Very clever. Nice. Ah, Dr. Olbermann, how goes the research? And we get this very weird, weird herd, kind of a custard herd man. Construction is complete to behold, sir. The rejuvenate array. And uh, what was that? it simulates hormone production. We get more science than we probably needed here. Oh, he pressed the button. It reverses the aging process. Um, we just got to test it on humans. And of course, Burns dismisses this. What am I, the FDA? Begin treatments at once. Remember Project Q? And we cut back to uh, a sealed off room. Danger, extreme, radiation hazard. Do not open before 10,000 AD. Mm, very well. Proceed with testing. Nice. All very comic booky as well. Like they're just going straight into it with a huge ray, a huge ray gun straight out of like Stark Perfect. Labs, basically. Um, this guy is fascinating to me. This Doctor Alberman chap, yes, um, Bongo exclusive character, I think. Which is weird. Why? Um, I guess actually, yeah. Like, it could have been Frank. Like if this yeah. was the show, it would have just they wouldn't have thought. I don't know. I don't think they would have thought they needed an additional scientist. Just for Burns, I think they would have just had Burns hire Frank. Um, Absolutely, yeah. He's the scientist for the town. Exactly. So I'm intrigued to see if there's any more Bongo exclusive characters and whether this guy. So I remember him from this, and I remember him just from our Bongo Springfield season. Um, so I don't know if he's going to pop up anymore or whether he's literally just in this. So is he just a Bongo exclusive character, a BEC, or is he a, a RBEC? Yes. What is the R? Recurring. Okay. Oh, yes. We will find out. TBC. So do you want to take this page? Sure. He is, um, Dr. Olbermann is talking to Burns and Smithers about finding a suitable subject, and they're looking at all the cameras, and naturally, um, they decide to go for Homer, who is still struggling with his donut promise to Marge about not eating any more than one. Uh, he's thinking, again... And another thing that we get here, we get in, we get people's thoughts, which is something you don't get access to. So he's thinking, which will be the one donut that satisfies my cravings? And then he gets one, and then the next thing you know, he's eating the entire box. Oh, Homer! And then a very very cool last image burns, looking sort of angry and appalled at what he's seeing. They're watching Homer on the cameras, uh, so yeah, they've decided that Homer will be the one. Prepare the ray. Prepare the ray. That's so, yeah. beautiful. That that is a beautiful panel. We've seen it least three or four beautiful bongos um some the... good easter eggs on the cctv as well including what i thought was barney the dinosaur but is actually someone in a balaclava trying to spray paint the camera and yeah. then a flying saucer over the cooling towers a, a leaked acid reactor place and then one guy's got one and the, yeah one guy screaming and one guy has got his foot stuck in something i think but yeah they still it's focusing on home. like pulling open the toilet door or something it's a, it's a weird one um, oh yeah or like his tie stuck or something yeah um out of all the mad stuff going on in that panel on those cameras they focus in on homer eating donuts they do and he he is the right choice so oberman is that what he's called yes Obviously, that's a, 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 some kind of reference to um, the, uh, the 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 Ubermensch, the, the German Nazi uh, Superman. But he also reminds me of Peter Sellers in um, Doctor Strange Love. So, and I don't know. Talk, check whether um whether there is a reference there but anyway he so he focuses i have but to focus the beam on the subject's precise location he says in unidentified accent he turns some knobs he pulls the lever and the beam hits homer's notoriously thick skull Burns is grinning. Nothing happens. Burns says nothing happened. Head in hands, another failure. At least it's not as bad as Project Q. We know all about that. Well, thank you, Little Miss Sunshine. He becomes irritated. Continue the research. Nice. Uh, some good light work on the middle Burns is. Um, very action-based sequence here. Um, this is the kind of stuff that, like, the top four panels would have um, been easier to convey in motion. You could, If it was me, I would have lost one of those three panels just because I wouldn't have wanted to draw something that uh, practical. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I like that they've referenced this Project Q 
new again. Like I wonder if that's gonna come back a third time. If any, I could see it being like the last the last panel is like a radioactive ape like, like escaping or something. Yeah, I think and so. Little Miss Sunshine is a is that just a common phrase or is that a Mr. Men reference? No, that's just a common it's a common phrase. There was also a movie around that time, a very good movie. I'm not sure it came out before or after that, but I, I do think it's called, a, a common phrase. Called Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Was that Alan yeah, Alda? Al- Alan yeah, that came. That must have been about 15 years after this. Really? Little Miss Sunshine, the movie. 2006. Uh, so three years after this. Starring this Paul... This is 1993. Oh, okay. 13 years after this. Apologies. <laughs> Starring Steve Carell, Alan Arkin, Paul Dano, Breslin, and, uh, and Abigail Breslin. Yeah, and and uh, if you look at the pictures of going back to um, Doctor Strange Love, if you look at pictures of Peter Sellers in the character of Doctor Strange Love, and no, I'm going to give him that one. Yeah, continue. You can, like, there's been references as well. Like, you can tell they love Doctor Strange Love and that kind of uh, satire. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if it was just a direct reference. Brilliant. Anyway, the next morning we cut to uh, what number do they live at? Wow, seven forty-two. Seven forty-two. Evergreen, up. Evergreen Terrace. Ooh, so we we hear and then we get we we'll cut again to Homer's G belly button and him trying to zip up his big old big boy pants, and uh, Marge is not happy. She says, you, "The way you were grunting, I thought you'd have a heart attack." Well, the pants must have shrunk in the wash, and uh, she has a go at him for eating all of those donuts. And then uh, as he bends over, there's a rip in his behind, and we see his. His white underpants. Later cut, uh, Marge has been out to high and wide to buy him some new pants. And she says, Homer? She does. Um, you've skipped ahead. She does. Um, that one, the second to last panel, like he's clearly massive. Like they're doing a perspective thing, but he's obviously clearly already growing. Oh, yeah. Like, um, and it's weird that she's just like, oh, I guess I'll have to get you some new pants when he's already there, like double the size he was the panel before. How many donuts did you eat yesterday? I don't think that would work, even in Springfield world, that eating three or four donuts would make your pants just not fit anymore completely the day after um, she knows like, homer very well he could have eaten 50 donuts that's true and it looks like he did uh that last image marge i like don't know why i just think it's good well rendered i'm not giving him credit for anything on this although the nice angle the above angle because i think that's again maybe foreshadowing the kind of being big i'm going to give them credit for that take it take the page that's oh yes marge says oh my lord and maggie is sucking a pacifier as they both look on in horror marge is so horrified she's lost her eyelashes and her dress <laughs> then it cuts to kent brockman in on the news in good morning springfield um talking about people who are too big for their britches apparently it can happen to grown-ups as well and then a mrs marge simpson returned from buying a husband a new pair of pints only to find out he had outgrown the house too and it's a panel of a very huge homer sized um, hole in the back of the simpsons house apparently is then, then we cut to two people watching tv two complete strangers watching the news on tv and it's it's an insurance policy but um company the boss says to the employer who looks exactly like dr alberman without glasses if you ever sell another policy to those Simpsons wackos, you're fired. Which is an odd real world, like, you know, implying that there's real world consequences to what they do in this new world of Bongo, which is going to be even wackier than TV show Springfield. And then yeah. you see him, uh, Burns watching the same news, still talking about giant Homer, and now he's happy. Did you hear that, Smithers? He's become a colossus. Why that's even better than being young? Oh yeah, they didn't want to even make him massive, did they? No, no, this is a mistake. And then Burns uh, imagines himself as a huge man. Imagine Charles Montgomery Burns standing astride the glowed. They'll name countries after me. I'll be like the jolly green giant, only not green and not jolly. And it says Burns land. That's very good. And um, there is, is a it? little... Yes, it is. Okay. The, the drawing is fun. I'm not saying that him taking over entire countries as a giant is fun. No, not for anyone other than him. And uh, we do get an idea that Homer is not actually naked. He's, uh, the super stretch underwear is going to allow him to still retain his giant dignity. Yes, and allow the and allow the comic to be published. Exactly. Without his, his dong hanging exactly. around. 
um, later with Burley uh, Burley registering the um, emotion they're driving along and see giant Homer by the road. Have I missed a page here? I've not. Have I? They've really just oh. have, they really just are driving along and see him as if it's nothing. Where's your father now? Maybe he thinks he's on his way to work. He's a giant Homer in his undies just strolling down the street. Homer, it's me, Marge. Homer, stop, please, honking her horn. And he's just so big that he can't even hear. And he, she's worried that um, he might accidentally hurt someone. Of course, he kicks a duff sign and bumps his head on a bridge and then walks directly into some um, power cables, which is actually how you normally take down giant men. I watched a movie not too long ago, and I think that's what happened happened he wasn't he wasn't as big as homer but i think actually those are weirdly drawn way too small because he bumped his head on the bridge but those pylons are usually bigger than a bridge like most yeah, bridges definitely bigger than a car perspective will be a tricky thing for this world but um it's weird that homer doesn't know like why is he now also like not able to communicate or talk or like think like why is he just instinctively walking down the road and not in any sort of fear so uh, right. i do like the bottom the bottom three panels are cool because it's sort of the road continues throughout the three panels i do like it when uh comics do that where they'll have like a it's three individual images but they can also be connected so there is so a I... movie called no no it's, it's, it's really nice how they've done that actually but um not rendered particularly great yes i was gonna say there is a movie called the, the the amazing colossal man and i watched the sequel um um i think it's called war of the colossal beast yes i watched this one recently you can get it on youtube and at the end spoiler he does grab he doesn't want to live anymore and he does become uh essentially not it, he becomes like um, more animal than man he's not able to communicate properly but the, the, his sister's in there and still thinks there's some human in there and stuff so I'm wondering given that this is clearly a reference to the original Colossal Man uh, movie he he doesn't uh, retain his smarts shall we say yeah um, I didn't read this comic prior to us doing this so for all I know they reference it soon that could be a plot point but it, it does be. just seem like he's a big um, lumbering idiot more so than ever yeah now you want to take this page sure um, we are now it now says soon which is I'm guessing we're going to see a lot of that they don't have to end a scene they're just going to say later or soon and then cut to something else Comics, so it's it? Quimby it's Quimby um, and his bodyguard and Troy McClaw which is a nice treat in a purple jumper and a lady who is called Miss Sex Object which is a uh, 90s creative. easter egg exactly um, they, they're doing something unrelated to Homer uh, we are gathered today says Quimby to honour a Hollywood legend the star of such films is Jagged Attraction and Look Who's Still Oinking which is great uh, Troy McClaw humour yes. I hereby declare this Troy McClaw day Troy is then going to put his feet in um, the cement a la I'm going to ask him in a minute sorry um... a la wall of, wall of fame um, Krusty the Clone and Gladys the Groovy Mule which is also a that is also a Troy McClaw reference to another line that he said nice. Homer's big foot appears very Monty Python sploosh into the cement get that big punk's name nobody tries to fit Diamond Joe Quimby for a cement overcoat and get away with it says Quimby after being splashed with cement and then back to Kent Brockman who is explaining what's just happened on screen pretty much yeah. it's nice to have uh, McClure in there and I think Miss Sex Object is a reference that, not a reference but a, a joke that they may nowadays regret in this children's comic comic yeah she, she's usually called Miss Springfield it's the same character same okay. design but they've changed that up so we um we get along to uh, you know your class Classic news reports of giant hip terrorizes Springfield with uh, the sideshow Mel in there as TV star spots UFO. That's the second UFO reference. Um, the incredibly growing Homer, nuclear power, and awakening giant. We have lots of uh, ideas repairing giant holes in your house from Homes and Garden. That's nice. 
be true. So we see this classic, um, and I guess this is almost certainly a reference to one of those uh, horror kind of movies, not probably King Kong. The story it keeps getting um, like its subject just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and then we see um, we see Barney, we see Barney in Moe's tavern, looking at uh, uh, me on the TV, saying, "My hallucinations are getting more realistic. Look at the guy. I better get an extra case of duff." Says uh, our first. I would say badly rendered character. Not as bad as it gets, but uh, but uh, compared yeah. to India Manapu in the next uh, panel, who is well rendered, it's the shape True. of things to come. I would say it's off model as opposed to badly rendered compared to we're gonna. I think we're not badly rendered quite just yet. It's not quite um, a bongo more, and it's also you have to knock off points for yourself or anybody listening. If you read Apu's thought speech in an Indian accent to yourself, you oh, are yeah, the problem. You are you are the Azuria in this situation. Uh, Homer is is talking about how um, Homer is trying to do a little internal joke here. You have always been our biggest customer, but it is possible to have too much of a good thing. He says, "I'm not doing oh, the voice. I'm not doing almost. the voice." Oh no, no. Not at all. That's just my normal <laughs> accent. Uh, he's reading. Like the, he's, go. he's reading the convenience store magazine. Um, giant customer, giant sales, convenience store illustrated. Nice. That's what I was going to say. That the magazine he's reading is convenience store illustrated, which is quite good. But it's yes. convenience. It's not just a newspaper or anything. It's it's a comic book, which is nice. Very good. It's a comic book. Um, it is. There was something else. Just go back one second. Oh yeah, TV tube on that top one. When people say Simpsons predicted things, etc. That does look like. Like YouTube, YouTube's uh, logo, and it's got the word tube in it, and it's about television. So it I'm is, but, but I don't know if that's like Television Guide's logo, um, like TV no. Guide's logo. Is that not? Um, it's called YouTube. No, but TV Guide, the magazine, which is the classic TV guide. I think that that's their logo, and I I wonder whether YouTube referenced their logo when they made uh when they made their logo. It's very likely, considering the other two are called News Weekly and Timely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, fortunate. Very, very much. Um, we may move on. Yes, we may. So, take the take the page, then. Now we are at Springfield Elementary, and this is one of the things that's going to work out well for us in Bongo. Uh, characters like Edna, Troy. We just saw Troy McClure as well, and he didn't speak. And I think I mentioned that before. <laughs> like, that be, it's the perfect chance to use characters like Edna, Troy, Sideshow Bob, Cecil. Anybody that it's basically cheaper to give them a comic book story. Um, Edna, probably one of the lesser ones because she does a lot in show but she is sat it says thoom thoom which um is the noise of homer strutting around outside edna sat at a desk um this darn headache i can actually hear my temples throbbing gasp she looks out the window and sees giant homer and then apologizes to bart who is writing i will not exaggerate my father's weight problem on the board which is quite funny good setting up dynamics we're already used to as well they don't have to introduce dynamics we already know this edna bart relationship so they can just jump straight into it and then we cut to something called house of donuts not lad lad um where all the police are naturally hanging out um man i needed this break full police mobilization is tough i'd say we've been rolling out non-stop since the order came down says a generic policeman who isn't wigan but is sat with lou and eddie as homer <laughs> that, that bottom left home is very good like that little face forward giant homer heading yeah. towards the donut shop um none of them the kind of talking about where he and he evidently removes the huge donut from the house of donuts which again happens in the simpsons but probably later than this maybe maybe they fed all of these ideas in from uh, bongo maybe bongo did have more of an influence than we uh than we gave it credit for perhaps and then yeah all the police officers scream as they realize what is happening above them yes the house of donuts donut looks like a big turd yeah second weird shit reference <laughs> <laughs> and so we then cut to a, a, a classic movie trope of talking heads of a uh, man on the street interviews and uh, we start off with Brockman talking about how they couldn't stop um, the giant uh, even though um, they had a very clever steak outside i.e. the place where they were all eating donuts a giant stock Springfield day one so we cut to the doctor's Hibbert and Monroe and um, 
Hibbert basically says um, nothing, <laughs> and uh, Monroe <laughs> uh, shouts um, about his book, I'm Okay, You're Sick and Twisted, and uh, refers to Carl Jung in a, in a, in a nice turn of phrase. Um, he talks about this is just a mass hysteria fanned by the speculative ramblings of attention grabbing know nothing self appointed pseudo experts. Hmm, yes, well, says, says Bro Bronkman, knowingly. They then go to uh, the amazing colossal Homer. That's the fourth time someone's been to the toilet in the 25 minutes we've been recording. Wonderful. Uh, we can have a word with the family. They try to get to Lisa, but um, Lisa says uh, nicely, no. And uh, just want to go back to Hibbert. Not only is he pemming and scamming a little bit, it is a very good drawing of him. Um, <laughs> and he's chuckling quietly. Chuckling without any humour or lightness on his face whatsoever. Very seriously chuckling. Uh, Monroe, Dr. Mervyn Monroe is another character that can be utilised in Bongo because... Harry Shearer hated doing the voice that's why they got rid of him because it's too which I think is a bit much for him to come in and say this one voice is too raspy I don't want to do it and then poor Julie Kavner he stood there with a Marge Patty Selma and, and Mrs. Bouvier for 34 years ruining her vocal cords while, yeah. while uh, Shearer just gets to do Mo exactly as uh, that Lisa's cool though good angle I, th I like the hit but Lisa's not bad this is this is the word Bongo excels there's there's a off character Hibbert and then a perfect Hibbert. Yeah, and I like next Rockman's, Rockman's chubby neck. You see him. And so, yeah, yeah, your turn. Go for it. And then we cut to inside the house from Lisa's perspective now, slamming the door on the media circus. And Bart is impressed by this um, for some reason. Marge comes back looking haggard with Maggie, who also looks haggard. Um, she's been chasing Homer around town all day. Uh, she lost him when she ran out of gas. Bart has, for some reason, reason recruited Lionel Hutz to appear, there we go, who is speaking, um, to just to help for some reason. I, I don't know what he's going to do. In but, 93, the Hartman was still around, right? When did he, uh, when did he die? Yeah, Hartman died in like 98, I think, 99. Yeah. So yeah, this is well before. Um, this is probably quite early in the Hutz and McClure introduction, actually, because he says, he doesn't often say Lionel Hutz attorney at law, and that's what he says, his first appearance, so they're setting that up as if it's like a catchphrase for him but I think they are the only two examples of him actually saying that um, green suit as well I don't know why they would um, they've done it with McClure as well in a slightly off colour outfit from the show but everybody else is like correctly coloured so I don't know if that's a, a conscious choice or if they just forgot and didn't want to look it's not like they had Wikipedia they would have had to go and get a videotape and rewind it with their own remotes or something and pause it at the, the yes. very second that they appeared on screen for the minutes they would have to pause it on the exact seven or eight minutes that he's in the episode fair the enough one year I don't come in uh, good Bart that's pretty much it for that page for good you Bart bongo quality that's right so we get on to uh, McClure it talks about how he's uh, going to help them out and uh, Marge kicks him out and then we cut to the exact room from Doctor Strange Love with his table and the board and um, uh, top secret command center beneath city hall and um, he's losing uh, Diamond Joe's losing his popularity because of the giant diet so he throws in some jingoistic military adventurism and uh, sends out Wiggum to uh, track him Cut a small talk with him. What's the bottom line? He's heading for the nuclear power plant, and uh, if he crashes in, it's uh, goodbye, Springfield. Her hello, slow, agonizing death by radiation poisoning. Um, great line, and, and a great line, and also a great panel. Right? That's another bongo panel that I'd be happy to have as a poster. I would say I'm happy with every bongo image I see on this page from Hutz all the way down to Wiggum. That Marge, angry Marge, is good, good angle once again. Tiny arm, but I like it. Um, that room as well is that's in an in Simpsons room that is the exact room from Doctor Strangelove but in this context it's being referenced because of the, the in show room I don't think this is two Doctor Strangelove references within like five pages but it also it is just inadvertently why is again a, another reference to feces with Quimby Quimby says what's the poop Wiggum what does that mean um, you say what's the scoop but that, that wouldn't make any sense at all 
I'll wait. I think it's just that this is a silly children's comic and, and Pope's funny. Yes, yeah, silly children's comic with silly children's characters like Miss Sex Object. Let me in. What the? I'm Mrs. Homer Simpson. I demand to see the Mayor Marge and family have arrived. Remember, you're out of your mind. Oh, that civilian in here shouts, shouts Clancy with a, as he bends his arm backwards. But Jam and Joe, he, uh, he just welcomes her in and he talks about the, how he's going, Homer is heading to uh, the nuclear power plant to destroy Springfield and uh, how he's arranged an airstrike in the tradition of old Hollywood monster movies. Yeah, nice, nice and simple solution. That's what I like about this. They don't have time to be messing around. He's just causing an airstrike. It's a great, um, great comic book solution that I don't think would happen outside of a Treehouse of Horror in show. I don't think Quimby. I don't think Quimby would do that as um, bad as he is. I think it's too sort of like realist. Like, maybe not realistic, but it's it's too clever of a move on his part. The interesting like, thing for me is that uh, they went with something like a, a monster movie parody when it's not a treehouse of horror it's just a straight up Simpsons comic yeah I think that's what they're establishing though in the, even though like it, I saw it happen with the Buffy comic when they continued the story in comic form they started doing like the, the monsters and like all that kind of stuff were way bigger oh, and, you know, yeah, like, yeah. It, so it sort of changed it up a bit but with the Simpsons it's already a cartoon so it's not like I think obviously they didn't want to make cartoonish like stories within the show they wanted it to be fairly real Realistic, especially in the early days, it was just like a very at the t whatever whatever seasons on now. Basically, it's still pretty human. They're still dealing with like you know, like Marge is in a Broadway play. You know, like Bart goes to camp. Homer Homer wears a pink shirt and gets sent to a mental hospital and meets Michael Jackson. Um, a very nineties. I think the thing is also that this came out on Halloween, nineteen ninety three. Nice. So maybe so they maybe they, they a, did do that. Yeah, kind of like a pseudo trios of horror because they do then eventually start doing Trace of Horror Bongos. Indeed. Moving on, so we call the Earth Strike. Do you want to take this page? Sure. Um, the Earth Strike has been called. Bart is impressed by this. Um, he won't get his hair must, Quimby promises. Um, yeah, he's he's just on board for doing it. Then Oberman shows up. Burns and Smithers appear to already have just been there, which I don't know if we already knew. Um, Oberman removes his glasses to clean them. He has developed a drug and they can only do it, obviously so there's only one serum, one single dose. They will only have one shot and they must not miss. Uh, Quimby would still rather just nuke him. Lisa has an idea. Maggie is trying to escape Margie's arms for some reason. Stakes is high, isn't it? Stakes is high, isn't it? Yes. Bart doesn't care. Uh, I like Alberman's no glasses look. We still haven't seen his eyes open, which is interesting. I wonder if that's a thing that we never get to see. Oh, I don't I think do, we will. Oh. That's the joke. Like Dr. Bunsen honeyed you. He has no eyes. Yes, he does, doesn't he? Doesn't he not have a nose? I think he has no eyes. That's the joke. Oh, no, he has yeah, glasses, right. but thinking, no eyes. I'm thinking of Beaker, who also does have a nose. Yes, he does. My Dr. Bunsen honey juice got no nose. So then it turns out that uh, when we, uh condescends Lisa as um, she tries to share her plan, but there's no time for that. So they all go out and they suit up and boot up and in a nice action sequence, which is almost certainly a reference to some movie that I, that I don't know. Um, they uh, get ready. Okay, boys, look sharp. Here he comes. Nice selection of images there. Yeah, very generic. Oddly not lent uh, Lou and Eddie, just a, a different duo of policemen. One of them changes race in the third panel, unless that's two different SWAT team members. Yeah, it looks like it's referencing something very specific. I just, I don't know what. And again, is this for children or adults? No, no, but then we get a beautiful splash page of Homer uh, against a beautiful blue sky. We can see his face forward, giant Homer with his foot coming down on the main street of Springfield. Zoom, zoom, zoom. If you blow this one, Wiggum, you can kiss your pension goodbye. Earthstrike is ready. Nice. I like Homer's face. Is great in this one. Um, I don't know why I'm in it as Quimby's assistant, but there I am. There um, I do like a Qu I do like Quimby and Wiggum interacting. They're uh, sort of not friends and they dislike each other. That's only happened a few times in show. So I the like original odd couple. Exactly. I'm in it too. Very much. There. 
Where am I escaping? That guy has to be someone. It has to be a reference to something. It's too this specifically guy. drawn. No, the guy at the front with his hands up. Like, is that is that also like a comic book cover? I'm not no one that, that I know of. I don't know. It looks like it's like the framing of it, those four at the front and the home. It just looks like it's referencing something. That's beautiful. It is. So we cut now to Homer's foot, Thum. He's on his way to the, he's almost at the nuclear plant when all these duff beer uh, vans driven by um, army or police people come by and Homer says, mm, beer, he turns, he starts mm -hmm. to follow the trucks away. I mean, isn't that what they did with King Kong? They lured him away? I can't remember. Probably they did it with the the colossal man would make more sense that they that they lured him away. Can't remember the movie. And they say, all is ready, he will pass directly in front of us. Obermen, the Obermensch is ready to fire the one shot at Homer J. Yeah, nice plan, good tactical um, tactical move here. And Obermen is ready with his t-shirt cannon to fire. I, I love on. this blue sky stuff. Anything that's on that kind of blue sky, I, I'm a sucker for it. It does look cool, and I do saw of like the single character panel with not really a background they're the couple we've seen a couple of those now like burns and wiggum and stuff that have uh yeah been nicely done it's still very i'm looking forward to when we get to less it's going to be years but uh less faithful uh art less simpson style art because this is sort of very traditional for now oh yeah we want less effort all round really plot yes dialogue and uh art if possible but then we have a, a pretty nice almost wordless page of Homer reaching for the duff uh, van. The uh, police officer jumps out and they fire the needle. And, and rather than going straight for the bottom, they, uh, they well, they, I guess they go for his builder's crack. And he face forward dozy Homer and he falls to the ground face first Homer. Yeah, nice, nice, easy. And again, comic books don't have a lot of time. They come up with a plan and they execute it. That's just, <laughs> it's, I have like nothing goes wrong here as it would in a TV show for like a third act sort of. No, there's no twist. No, he's just the, the successful. As far as I know anyway, I haven't, again I don't know what happens next, but for now it looks very successful and it right. appears to have been. Well, here we go, it is successful. The drug is counteracting the growth ray and he turns back to normal size and uh, he's, he's, he realises that he's, he's not known what he's been doing and he screams when he sees all the cameras and meets up with his family all still in his fairly clean underwear and uh, Mr. Burns then kidnaps him and does a bunch of tests on him in uh, again a very cool set of uh, fairly monochromatic single colour scenes. Yeah, those four bottom panels are my favourite from what we've seen. Probably best bongo, like there's an entire like a one, the Simpsons silhouette that's one shape, but it's all five of them. Oh, that's great, isn't it? Um, Just sort of, yeah, and it displays like Burns' is evil dominance over them simply by just having them be shadows. And then yeah, like the weird sort of alien-esque it looks like he's in sort of, yeah weird alien test tube kind of things or like testing center just because of the odd color choices um yeah very good very good indeed odd odd for them to have odd for them to have uh further tests as well very realistic it didn't yeah. just go back to homer living you know like they, they continued with further testing well i'm wondering whether there is some kind of twist in the last page that they've saved so then we go to mr burns's office and uh, i'm nervous i've never been good at tests says homer and uh rather predictably bongo they weren't that kind of test homer on the very on the nose and uh, he has tests back they're all perfectly normal and he's actually lost three pounds so donuts here i come um so now mr burns wants to know uh, when is he going to get the the growth serum and he says well i couldn't tell them about the results the actual results as the ray had a horrible side effect it turned the man into a balding obese donut obsessed buffoon and um blast says uh, Mr. Burns, he doesn't want that to happen to him. And so in a very, very, very good Burns, face forward Burns panel here, my dreams are dashed and the mocking laughter of Dame Fortune rings in my ears. And then uh, a twist that looks like he's back or is that Bart now? In the meantime, beef up security here. I have the strangest feeling I'm being watched. The end question mark. 
in a very Lynchian ending, I don't think we know who that is. I don't think it's established. Like the, there's there's a new giant behind Burns watching him. But yeah, it doesn't doesn't say anywhere on that page who it is. It does look like it's got the it's definitively like, like a Simpson eye and nose. But it could be, you could like that could be Flanders. That could be Rod. Flanders. It could, oh, it could Flanders. be Maud Flanders. Flanders. Could it? No, it could be Ralph. It could be Martin. There's plenty of people it could be. It's very open ended. Um, that blue burns is great. Face forward blue burns with his teeth out. Uh, sort of yeah, an easy wrap up to the story. Homer's fine. To make sense. The ray had horrible side effects. It turned him into a balding obese buffoon, but it did not. Well, that's they a were joke, isn't it? That were happening to him. Can I play the piano anymore? Exactly. So um, that's the end of the first story. I mean, I'm sure we're not going to spend an hour talking about the, every single one of these stories, but uh, let. Let's skip through to the last bit of this episode, this um, issue, because it does have a backup story. And this is very much from the EC comics, the horror comics, creepy and weird and all those stuff. And there's a, another homage to classic covers. Um, the Ghastly Tale of the Collector. Oh, and um, Bart Simpson's Creepy Crawly Tales. So let's have a look. So we hear Bart doing, the, again, the classic EC Comics intro where he's in the top corner and he's like the Crypt Keeper or something. And he says, uh, Four Color Fright. Do you get a, a, a thrill out of tracking near mint treasure? So this is about comic book collecting. And we start off with a very nice... Uh, picture of uh, a haunted house i imagine where on the edge of town a uh, reclusive existence for a man there with a single servant little is known about him grumpy and antisocial deep in the house is a treasure beyond imagining nice page one the um the actual like that one yeah uh, i don't know why it says irony on the side top yeah the of that's a reference to a publishing house or something but i did also like marsh thing behind homer's finger that looks like a fun comic to expand um this must predate comic book guy then because... i think so marsh thing is a reference to swamp thing of course the exactly comic um yeah i imagine this is homer as well because that first bongo that we've just looked at the very first Simpsons comic Homer doesn't have he's in it but he's not Homer so it's sort of a bold choice to have your first comic not have your main character have, be yeah. able to speak or deliver comedy lines well, it's interesting that even though it isn't sold as a as a treehouse of horror it essentially is this, this yeah. whole comic so then we we cut to um, Homer and, it, and the weird thing was one of the first creative horrors when they did the Raven Brev Edgar Allan Poe and it was a very straightforward rendition of the Raven but it was really kind of popular and so I think it gave them the uh, ability to do that kind of stuff and this is a, another one of those very wordy yeah this feels very Raven-esque yes. to me it's, but just sort of the outfit he's wearing and the, the fact that he's not Homer again he's just a guy this could have as we know this was kind of a guy comes in around season three so he's either just been introduced or not he's not a familiar character yet but there's no way if this story got done like 10 11 issues later it wouldn't have been comic book guy story right. although the, the collector is a trace of horror comic book guy character from uh, it, it's a classic like... um, thing. I, I don't know. It, it is a Twilight Zone or something like that about uh, a person that, that they're always collecting. They always end up collecting humans or something like that. So anyway, the plot is very, very wordy indeed for a comic. And he talks about how he's this collector is uh, uh, reading his Captain Squid episode seven. And he's obsessing over the world's greatest library of comic books. We cut back to what eventually would become the Android dungeon i imagine but isn't yet and uh, uh, he negotiates a price with the local comic shop owner by uh, telling them he's going to turn him over to the vice squad for selling betty page trading cards to miners and uh, a low life uh, calling him outside and he taught the ruffian a sharp lesson um, keep away from my precious mint copy and uh, he bags up his copy of captain squid and takes it down to the boxes and crates of the heirlooms that he um, what well, he stores in the bottom of his house. Yes, got a light. Got a light. I'm, I'm, 
when when this finishes in eight minutes, I am going to have to go. So uh, I'm going to wrap this up in eight. That is fine. I think we can do that. Uh, yeah, this is just a, a nice little side story. Probably just to get Homer in there for a start. But again, he's not being Homer. He's being some kind of rich comic collector millionaire. Um, I do like the idea that nothing actually happened. Like he says, there's a ruffian who's trying to steal from him. But he was just a regular guy. And then Homer got panicky. So that's why he has this seller. Like nobody's actually trying to get these of it it's himself because it's the simpsons so anyway he um he uh, he, uh like me to discuss the page you're, you're cutting out a lot which is not good no yeah you discuss this page go for it uh he is putting comics away and he realizes it's too hot in the comic room so he's gonna smedley smedley simpson um so he's re trying to fix the air conditioning or something but santa's little helpers there which is odd because he's not homer True. so essentially he's trying to fix the air conditioner. Uh, yeah he's not doing a very good job and uh santa little helper comes in and uh he gets locked in the vault and again i'm sure this is a reference to a twilight zone episode or something like that so he's he's stuck in here and he can't get out because his um his comic room is so well protected he's just gonna have to stay here for the whole weekend reading comics what a shame he 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 but then because the climate control has gone out he's getting colder and colder and he smedley returns on monday morning so it's only been a weekend um and he he is talking about nia mint her slightly spine roll very fine and then the, probably the best image in the bongo of homer having completely lost his mind he's He's got spirals for eyes. Uh, he's burned all of his comics to keep warm. Very Twilight Zone, isn't it? This the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, if it's not a direct reference, it's just a a well thought out story that could have been a Twilight Zone story. It's definitely a rip off. There's a, there's a, there's one called um, uh, to need more time or something like that. And it's a dude who is reading all the time and he wants more and more time. And then eventually he wakes up and everyone in the world has died except for him because he gets locked in some kind of bunk and then um, um, it's called Time Enough at Last actually and he um, he then he, he gleefully is happy that he gets all this time to read all these books and instantly his glasses fall up and he steps on them and he's doomed to the rest of existence with no books until of course he finds a glasses shop definitely been referencing either the Simpsons or Family Guy as well sort of directly uh, yeah and then Bart wraps it up uh, and I saw it is very similar to the rave and um, given that it came out on Halloween that's probably they were just doing a direct nod to something that was successful when it was done in the show which I think we're going to see a lot of to be honest it's I think it's more the like this this worked on the show let's do it I would say that it's not again. really the same wording as the raven and stuff it doesn't have the same tone I think it's just like a lot of those EC comics from the 50s um, those horror comics they were very very wordy they did you did get like a lot a lot more boxes and, and i was reading something, something about stan lee actually and the way marvel started to do it where the artists would actually draw the pictures first and then the um the writer would have to fit boxes and words around to make it make sense uh, that actually was revolutionary to getting rid of like all of this text stuff kind of you saw a lot less of that nice. from from the 60s on but yeah so then we've got um a letters page but it's not a real letters page because it's only um oh here we go how can there be a letters page well in case you missed it there was a one shot mic called simpsons comics and stories a few months back so oh, i set a bongo too late we'll have to go back at some point maybe for episode yes. 100 and do simpsons comics and stories first or maybe we'll just go and do it before this comes out so who knows exactly so we got some nice letters some uh classic bart dracula uh raiders of the lost ark and and um bath, uh, uh, bath. that's <laughs> that's a reference to garth from um Wayne's yeah but World. It's, also, it's also just charlie brown as garth from Wayne's World. it's not remotely bart simpson it's not well, i think the art that we're going to see in these things is going to be the most telling of what sort of what was going on culturally at the time i think so we got raiders of the lost part which is a it's a classic oh, oh that well through those um there's a, there's a q a thing though <laughs> Good luck editing this. I'll just leave it. There we go. I bet we type team these. Oh, it's the Jeez. very last. It's the very last page. That's why he's doing that. 
Many questions. Why doesn't Homer actually yell at his boss when his boss yells at him? Does the word unemployment mean anything to you, Jason? All right. So let's read one more and then wrap it up. We've got less than a minute. How old was Homer when he had his first duff? Obviously not old enough, Mark. Will Maggie ever talk again? We asked her, but she wouldn't tell us. All right. Are you See there? You bongo. Yes. See you in the next bongo. That was a good one. So um, stop recording there now. That was the end. Good bongo. Um, All right.